main channel, um, you're about to watch some serious fucking tea, and I'm actually really, really, really nervous about this video. If you hear music in the background of this right now, it's because Hunter and I are editing my new music video. So I just wanted to start off this video really quickly, you guys, by telling you, this upcoming week on my new song FaceTime and the music video for it will be dropping on my YouTube channel and I'm losing my mind, I'm so excited. I literally wrote and made this song a year ago almost. It's a song about, you know, not wanting to be really serious with someone, especially if they're far away and it's crazy that it's still a song that I can deeply relate to. And I think a lot of you will be able to relate to it too. And we put our hearts and souls into this music video. So we are like so excited for you guys to see it. It's <laughs> definitely not what you expect. If I can say, one thing out of every Tana Mojo music video to ever exist, this one is the most unexpected one. And I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for all of the support on my new MTV reality show. Announcing that was the craziest, most stressful, emotional thing I've ever done. And to receive that much love on something is so amazing and so beautiful. And I'm just so thankful. I feel like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be in life right now. If you know me, you know that I'm constantly searching my indirects on Twitter, reading about what people have to say about me without me knowing, you know? I'm like, follow me on Twitter if you wanna like it interact with me or like whatever. But reading my indirects for the past few weeks and them all just being like people being like, I'm so excited for Tana Mojo's reality show, thinking I'm never gonna see it, has literally had me being the most emotional little bitch, so. And for everyone asking, MTV is about to start filming all of the craziness that's going on with everything, with Jake and I right now, all kinds of crazy stuff is coming. Stay tuned on my socials and MTV socials for that. It's so weird telling people to follow MTV to get updates on me, I don't think I'll ever get over it. And for anybody living in Florida or Orlando or that just wants to like take a little trip to Florida. Not this weekend, but next, I am going to be at MegaCon Orlando meeting you guys, hugging you guys, hanging out with you guys. I posted an Instagram photo of me smoking weed, being like, come meet me at MegaCon, and Jordan ripped me a new asshole because weed isn't legal in Florida, so... <laughs> I'm gonna be doing a VIP mukbang with you guys there. I think that's already sold out, but there are some GA meet and greet tickets left, so I'm gonna link that below. And before this video is pretty much the perfect time to announce that yesterday I dropped scandalous thongs and a Tana face tattoo hoodie and t-shirt, which I did not plan on dropping right at the time of this video. It's very ironic. I've been literally making that shirt for like six months, but everything I'm doing lately is just so psychic. I'm on such a little psychic wave, so oops. So yeah, this video is a really scandalous video about someone with a lot of face tattoos. So if you wanna get some like merch to like match the vibe of this video, that's linked below. Handcrafting a thong was a very interesting process, but I can honestly say I think they're like better than like Victoria's Secret or like most thongs. So if you guys wanna get a three pack and wear my merch on your pussy and or dick, <laughs> Those are linked below and I think once those are gone, they're gonna be gone forever because they're really hard to make. Yeah, without further ado, I'm just gonna let you guys get into this video. And I know I say this a lot in this video, but please just take things lightheartedly. Don't ever click on a Tana Mojo video expecting to take things seriously. This video is just a funny story. I mean no fucking harm. I'm not coming for anyone's necks or anyone's tattooed necks. I just wanted to tell you guys that story. So I'm really hoping people don't get mad and by people, I literally just mean the people that this video is about. <laughs> I'm nervous. I can't talk about it anymore. The more I talk about it, the more I just don't want to upload it. And then this is never going to make it to the internet. And then I'm going to waste my time and have to refilm this. So bye. And I love you. Thank you for all of the love and support on everything lately. It literally makes me so emotional every day. I don't know how I got this lucky. You guys are my entire world. So bye. You guys are so messy. A boy. I just got in trouble. I just got a phone call and got in trouble by so. You got in trouble with a girl? Why'd like, you get in trouble? She's like, why is uh, Tana posting pictures in the house? Well, you fucked Tana the other day? Today. <laughs> I'm Tana Mojo, and I'm here in New York City for the VMAs this week. Oh, oh my god, my uh -huh. ex-boyfriend is confirmed to attend. This will be fun. Hi. Well, the last time I sat here, I was filming Boyfriend Rates My Outfits. And now here I am. Cheated on single, savage mode. <laughs> crisis right now and I'm stressing myself out and I'm stressed out. I'm just gonna vent to you. I'm just gonna talk to you. I don't know what today's video is gonna be. <sighs> Whenever I don't upload a story time, at least every like 10 videos, I like hate myself for it. Oh my god, now I have to shit so bad and it's like watery shit. 
Watery shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just feel like no matter what, like I'm not a daily vlogger like all the time. I'm not a DIY YouTuber. I'm a story time YouTuber, that's what I started with, whatever. I feel like if I go a long time without uploading a story time, people are like, we want story times, where are the story times? Did you run out of story times? And by people, I mean the 19 voices in my head. I don't know, it's just something in me. I feel like I owe them to you, and it's not that I don't have any. If anything, I have more than ever, but it's like every story I have is going to wreck someone's home. <laughs> like. It's just to the point where everything that happens to me like has to do with an A-list celebrity or like no, it's just like fucked up and there's no way at the point that I'm at to like tell a story without people not like knowing who it is or what it's about or it's just way too fucking scandalous and someone's gonna be way too mad about it. And then I'm always filming these story times, editing the entire thing, wasting the fuck out of my time and then just like literally not uploading them because I'm like wait this is a little much. point like a year and a half ago Lil Xan cheated on me <laughs> and at the time I was like I'm never gonna tell this story this shit is way too savage I'm scared of his fans I'm scared of what people are gonna say I'm just gonna whatever and then as time went on I was like wow it really is an end of the world like you got cheated on by a SoundCloud rapper in a relationship that like wasn't even to be taken seriously anyways and over time started to decide that I did kind of want to make it a story time and then like four or five months ago I sat down and filmed it I edited it I felt like it was too much I felt like my boyfriend at the time would have been so mad at the video because we were so monogamous even though he was like totally cheating on me too <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna talk to this video like I'm not uploading it and then let's see if it makes it to the internet hey and then now in light of like recent events like me getting cheated on again it just like reminded me so much of the other time I got cheated on and I just like really want to tell this story <laughs> and so I sat down the other day and I filmed the entire thing I haven't talked to Diego in like <laughs> <laughs> At the point of filming and editing this video the other day and choosing to like literally upload it, I hadn't talked to him in like nine months. I didn't even think he would care at all. The entire video, I addressed him as like random SoundCloud rapper. But then I kind of came to the realization that everyone's gonna guess it anyways and if anything, it's more respectful for me to literally just say his name, I think. And the whole story I filmed was centered around like how we met through Adam22 and like at his party and like whatever. And then literally hours after I filmed this story time, I don't tweet about it, talk about it, anything. Diego tries to reach out to me through Adam because we like had each other blocked on everything. <laughs> and we're like joking about filming this Fashion Nova video. I decided it's a bad idea. And I'm like, fuck it. I still said SoundCloud rapper the whole time. I'm gonna upload this story time, whatever. And so I stay up all night editing this video. The next morning I wake up and I'm going to Jake's house for this party that he's throwing, whatever. And I decide I'm just gonna like wait a day and like think about it and make sure this is what I wanna do. But I pretty much came to the conclusion that I was gonna upload the story time. And then I show up to Jake's house. I show up to this party. I get drunk as fuck. I walk down into the party and the first person I see is Lil Sam. And I haven't seen him in like, a year? Maybe like 10 months? And the second I've exported this fucking 40 minute long video like about him, I run into him. Of course, Drunk Me is all about a good life talk and we just like go into this fucking life talk. And he apologizes, we unblock each other, we send a little DM, we're like super nice. I'm probably a little too nice because I'm drunk. I wake up the next day and I'm like, wow, but like he still did cheat on you. And it's like, why am I in this weird mindset of life right now where I'm like trying to protect these cheaters? But like at the same time, everybody makes mistakes. And if I was a fucking SoundCloud rapper who could fuck any bitch in the world, I, eh, I would just like fuck bitches. I don't know, I probably wouldn't like fake wife up a new girl like every week. We all have our demons, you know? And like what sucks is in reality, I'm not coming for him at all. If anything, like he just followed me on Instagram, like we're cool again, like everything's fine. But I I hate that making videos like this could mean that you're not cool with someone or it could mean that people are gonna go give him hate because in reality, like I don't want him to give hate. We're all humans, we've all made mistakes, whatever. But I'm still like a story time channel and I'm like trying to be a savage again and like I really wanna make this video and like I've told this story nine times and I just like won't upload it because I'm being a pussy but like I'm supposed to be back on savage mode so like should I just upload it? But I also feel like it's like more respectful to just like say his name because like everyone knows it's about him. I don't know what to do. Xanarchy members, if you're watching this, no harm, no foul. Like sending you my love, you hate me either way, so I might as well be a savage, right? To my fans, there's no need to go send hate. Everybody makes mistakes, everybody has those days. I'm literally just telling a story time that I feel like it's my duty to tell. Okay, let's hop in. 
actually, when was this? Like two years ago? Yeah. Okay, so it's like a year and a half to like two years ago. I was just deciding if I wanted to move to LA full time or not. I still wasn't living in LA full time. I had a whole ass house in Vegas and was like renting a part time place with like Elijah and Christine and like Ashley was always there. I'm like, whatever. And I was like falling for Bella. And they're like hanging out all the time. And I was like, wow, like, should I move to LA? And so I started coming out there more. And this was also at a point where I just wanted to be like young and wild and free. I'd been in really toxic, crazy relationships in the past. I'm like cheated myself. <laughs> At this point of life, I knew that like whatever I wanted to do, I just wanted it to be like for fun, savage mode. You're in LA, like you're fucking out here. You're like a social media influencer. Like. And I kind of came to the conclusion at this point of life that like I wanted to date a rapper. There is just something about rapper dick <laughs> that hits differently. There's something about dating a rapper that just like hits differently. Like. The energy, the lifestyle. It's literally like a whole ass tornado like comes and picks you up and like takes you to another world. You know what I mean? And like sometimes you just like wanna be like disrespected. <laughs> and so I kind of knew I wanted to date a rapper at this point of life, you know? And I've been seeing photos of Lil Xan like go everywhere. I also am the type of person just to defend myself really quickly because I know like the Xanarchy gang is gonna call me a clout chaser or whatever. I'm like, yes, I'm a clout chaser, but like at this time I wasn't. No, I'm just kidding. But I've always been the type of person who's also very attracted to people that are traditionally not attractive. Like there's something about people that look different and sound different and just sound so stupid. And that are confident in them being like different than most people that I'm very attracted to. I just find myself attracted to people that are not traditionally attractive to other people. And that whole rapper energy, that like face tattoo, like head to toe babe, like I don't wash my hair, like eh, like energy was just what I was about at that point of life. I'm still kind of about that, honestly. Like we love a good rapper moment. I'm like, but now I just like moved on from like SoundCloud rappers to like A-list ones, but anyways. And so I remember seeing this photo of Zan going like viral on Twitter. I really want to find it because I want to see if anyone else is like, oh, he looks hot there. Is putting his face in the video like too far? Hey Diego. <laughs> it was a specific ass photo of him like with a puppy. Me remembering this, I'm literally psychotic. <laughs> I'm like, I actually can't remember my own address, but I remember the photo of Lil Dan with a puppy that like got me into this mess. <laughs> so, I think I like responded hard eyes to it or something like that on Twitter. And then a few days later, he DM'd me on Instagram. That was the moment too that I realized like I could literally fuck anyone I wanted by interacting with them on social media. It's like crazy what a verified tab does. <laughs> and, so, and so he DM'd me and instantly he was just very like, You're the love of my life. You're the one I want to be with. Like it's me and you against the world, baby. We would be the ultimate power couple. Like I've never seen someone like you. Like let's be together. Like oh my god. And like obviously in a traditional circumstance, I would be very quick to be like, oh, this is too far. I'm like, but when they're rich and with a lot of clout, it like doesn't matter. <laughs> but knowing that whatever I would be getting myself into wasn't going to be something serious and that it was just kind of like for fun. If anything, it was very exhilarating and fun to me, like how fast this was like moving. And so then we just started texting like every day, like just like cutesy ass shit. I don't know, just him being like, I wanna give you the world and me being like, really? Hard eyes? And so our common denominator was Adam22. I was really good friends with Adam at the time and so was Zan obviously. Adam was also just texting me every day like power couple of the year clout moment. I feel like Adam is so one for like a good clout moment. It was about to be Adam's birthday. He was texting both me and Zan basically planning for us to like meet up for the first time at his birthday party if that makes sense. Nothing good ever happens to me at an Adam 22 birthday party jump cut to me this year almost getting my ass beat <laughs> and so and so the day comes I show up to the party. I walk into Adam and Adam instantly takes me to to Zan. And so pretty much from the first moment of meeting, I just like felt like we were gonna hook up. Our vibe, I don't know. We ended up actually getting along really well and hitting it off and like starting to talk. And this party was at this crazy house like overlooking all of Hollywood and there was a big pool in the backyard and throughout the pool there were all these like stones in the middle of the pool, like big stepping stones, like the size of like four or five people. And so we walk out to the middle of this pool and we're sitting on this big stone in the middle of this pool while there's a whole ass house party going on and like all of Hollywood like out this way. And it was like so soy romantic romantic and cute and like, and like, I didn't live in Hollywood yet. So like, I'm at this crazy party with all these fucking famous ass people, like deciding if I want to move here. And now I'm sitting in the middle of this pool with like this rapper that I literally like scouted on Twitter and like, we're hitting it off and everything's great. We end up sitting in the middle of this pool for like an hour and a half, just having like a life talk. And like, don't get me wrong. I'm not sitting here saying like, brightest crayon in the box or sharpest tool in the shed. But I also think people are very quick to be like, 
Wow, anything I want to say is so rude. <laughs> Like judging you if you the person that you want to be with and you are not Immensely intellectually compatible. However, it, someone can make you laugh or make you happy or make you feel good about yourself My voice going eight octaves higher <laughs> But like really And that was always what it was with Xana's I felt like he just like made me really happy and made me laugh and like made me feel really good about myself and kind of like just me from my like more serious world and like brought me into this like very fun easygoing world and to date someone where you can kind of like check your life at the door and kind of engulf yourself in their life is a very fun light-hearted like escape it's like fun right okay hello I don't know sorry like I'll go get therapy and so later that night we end up making out and it's like on the floor in like the middle of a room of like 20 people like probably not a good idea <laughs> Linda the plug comes in and she Instagram stories us and so she records us she posts it to her story we don't think anything of it we keep hooking up whatever a few more hours go by eventually all of my friends are leaving the party so I'm like fuck I'm gonna leave and so I'm like trying to say bye to him and he's like no like baby don't go like stay the night like let's hang out like whatever and I'm like no like I don't want to be that girl like I'm just gonna go like it was like so nice to me like oh my god and he's like asking me on a date the next day and I'm like I don't know like whatever and so then I'm like I hop up in the race with all my friends and I go and buy plan B actually for hooking up with someone else <laughs> Jesus Christ. And on this car ride, I'm like, wow, I actually kind of miss hanging out with him. Like, I wish I hung out with him longer. And as I'm saying that out loud to my friends in the car who are all obviously consequently judging me, imagine Elijah Daniel just roasting my set for being into Lil Xan. He texts me and he's like, why do I miss you, LOL? Or like some fucking dumb ass shit that he would say, sorry, hey. I'm like, oh my God, me too. And keep in mind at this point, I don't really know him. I do just think he's like really fucking sweet and like not a compulsive liar. So like, and so he invites me back over to his loft like later in the night and so I'm like, like, should I go? And then finally I'm like, eh, fuck it. Like, I've wanted to get with this guy for a while. We've been texting. What do you think's gonna happen? You're like gonna wait to like not fuck for like three days and then fuck? Like, it's gonna be the same fucking outcome anyways. Like, he's a rapper. What do you expect? You know? That's a whore mentality. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I was on my savage shit. I honestly miss that Tana. I wish I could embody that savage Tana right now. And so I go over to his house. We end up staying up really late talking again, like hooking up all night. And the entire time as we're hooking up, he's being like, I know I just met you for the first time, but I feel like the stars fucking intertwined and like we're meant to be like be my girlfriend be my girlfriend please be my girlfriend will you be my girlfriend and I'm like bro I literally just met you tonight like no you know and he's like I'll do anything it takes for you to be my girlfriend please be my girlfriend like and I'm like I don't know like we should hold off on this I think you're the one for me just like be my girlfriend I'm like we fall asleep to the sunrise it's like magical we wake up the next day as a session with Diplo like totally normal <laughs> And he leaves her this session with Diplo. And so I decide I'm gonna go home. On my way out of his loft, his manager walks out of his room and is like, yo, like, I've never heard Zan talk about someone like the way he talks about you. Like, I think you're the one for him. I think you should give him a chance. Like, I heard you guys all night, like, him, like ask you to be his girlfriend. Like, you should do it. You should be his girlfriend. Like, just trust me. Like, he's about you. I've never seen him be about someone like this. Like, whatever. And if anything, looking back, that's what grinds my gears the most. Like, I love his manager. Don't get me wrong. But like, for this like grown ass man to be like, advocating for him so hard to be like my boyfriend when like he knew what a crazy world to be like wrapped up in I don't know anyways and so then on the car ride home I'm like Hunter calls me he's mad I hooked up with Lil Xan we like end things for a little bit <laughs> I go on Twitter to see that this clip that Lena posted of the both of us hooking up is like going absolutely viral and people are fucking so mad about it and honestly I didn't really think it was gonna be that bad I also thought people would be like here for it because we both had very like raunchy like on the edge brands it's like a perfect match like oh my god um but they just like weren't <laughs> And so I go through all these Twitter threads and it leads me to this girl's Twitter. Let's call her Steph. I click on Steph's Twitter and her bio is like Zanarchy gang broken heart rose emoji Diego fucking May 5th. And so I scroll down her Twitter She's on this huge Twitter rampage being like, Diego and I are in an open relationship. I thought Tana was hot from day one. Like, I'm so proud he pulled a 10 like that. Is she a baddie for real though? Like, just some shit like that. And I'm like, like, imagine. Like, you're leaving this guy's house who's begging you to be his girlfriend and you're on Twitter scrolling through a thread of his girlfriend saying she like hand selected you because you're a baddie like for him. <laughs> and you're like, 
Welcome to Los Angeles. I get back to my house and Diego ends up asking me on a date later that night. And so later that night, I go back to his house. We like go out to eat, whatever. We come back, we're like hooking up. He's like, will you be my girlfriend, please? Like you are the one for me. I know that you're the one for me. Like just give me a chance, give me a chance. Will you be my girlfriend? Like I literally think there was a point where he literally got down on one knee. What do I have to do for you to be my girlfriend? And I'm not gonna lie to you. Like we were like vibing, you know? Like I was like, damn, like I do fuck with you and I'm having a really good time and I can see myself continuing to do this, but like I don't know you. And he's like, just take a chance. Like what do I have to do? Like whatever. And so eventually, and so I'm like, well, before I answer that or we continue to talk about that, like who is this girl? And I show him Steph's Twitter and this whole fucking Twitter rampage and whatever. And he's like, ma'am, like that's my crazy ass ex from fucking the IE where I'm from, stay right. <laughs> I'm just kidding, sorry. And he's like, she's fucking nuts. She's just in love with me. Like we're not together anymore. He pulls out his text with her. He shows me just like a giant thread of like hundreds of gray texts from her for like weeks. Him like breaking up with her. He's like, she's just fucking crazy. I promise you I have nothing to do with her. Some fans love her because she like manipulates them. But like, please trust me. Like, I promise like you're the one, like all the shit. And I'm like, I just have such a soft spot for people who are like misunderstood and like people who the internet just like think one thing and like it's like different. Like I've been through that, you know? I would also hate for someone to like not trust me or be with me based on someone else's Twitter. Like I would want them to at least give me a chance if that makes sense. And I don't know this girl and for all I know she literally could just be some like crazy girlfriend turned fan that he's like describing and like yeah you know and it's not like he's just saying like oh like don't worry about her he's literally saying like she's fucking absolutely psychotic I want nothing to do with her here is our breakup here is months of me not responding to her here is me blocking everything and her finding ways to reach out to me like trust me like blah 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 all this shit I'm like okay I believe you fuck it whatever and so then we go back into the girlfriend talk and I'm like I can't be your girlfriend right now like it's that's just too much like I think we need to get to know each other whatever and he's like okay well like I leave for New York at 6 a.m. will you come on this trip with me and we'll get to know each other on this trip to New York and like if like it goes well like when we come back like will you be my girlfriend like he's basically asking me to go on this trip to New York with him in like eight hours and like get to know him on this trip to New York and if I like him enough like be his girlfriend which is absolutely crazy and that's why I did it no <laughs> and, so, and like I just love a good spontaneous moment you know every story time really does fall back on me being a dumbass though like anyone in their right mind like would not drop everything and go to New York with this SoundCloud rapper that they just met expecting like something good out of it <laughs> but like at the same time like bitch this is what you wanted this is what you manifested this is what you fucking asked the universe for here it is and so I was like okay you know so he buys me a ticket on this flight so then I buy Ashley a ticket on this flight and I'm like Ashley guess where we're going girls trip to New York <laughs> So I go home, I pack my shit. I literally drag Ashley to New York City. I have never seen Ashley not want to go somewhere more. But shout out to my dog. Uh, for not letting me like murdered by like a bunch of rappers like in New York by myself. Hey, hey. And so then we go to the airport and I get to the airport and things are good and fresh and sister fun. Like, I'm not gonna lie, like at this point, like he makes me really happy and we really do vibe. Like he makes me feel like the prettiest, most perfect princess in the whole wide world. But I also kind of realized that dating someone like him would mean like the like mom role, you know, that every girlfriend he's ever had is gonna be the like, carry your backpack, carry your jacket, like I'll get you a, like, oh my God, you want nine blowjobs right now type of girlfriend. And I'm just like, not that bitch, wow. But I just was that bitch again. Is life repeating itself? Holy fuck. And so again, the entire time he's just like, will you be my girlfriend? Will you be my girlfriend? But also like showing me off. Me like, look how hot my girlfriend is. And just like if he was doing interviews or like shows or whatever would be like, I'm like proud of me, you know? And like meeting fans together, it was so cute. He was just like always hyping me up and it was like so cute. I'm like, it was just like cute, okay? But again, I just want to reiterate, if it were up to me, I would have taken things very slow. I think this is one thing that the Xanarchy Nation has just had is so confused about me for so long. And I'm gonna put it to rest right now. I never once was like, I'm your girl. I'm gonna show you up. I'm gonna whatever. It was always him being like, you are my girl. Be my girl. I don't want you to be with anyone else. Let's make this official. Like, I'm gonna tie you down. Have my fucking babies. Let me nut in you and fucking let's keep it. Like, you know? And so we spent like the next four days in New York. It's a really great trip. And then he's like, hey, I meant to tell you this, but like, I'm not going home. I'm actually going to Maine and Boston and fucking Ma Actually, do you even know where we went? Oh, no, not yet. <laughs> I don't want you to leave. Please come with me. I don't think I mentioned this, but this entire trip, I am entirely hiding from Jordan. He literally thinks I'm like at home in my bed, like with the flu. And I'm like in New York City, like with Lil Xan. <laughs> I just like knew Jordan would be mad, probably for good reason, you know? But like I was just like living my best life and it was fine. So he ends up convincing me to 
this day and like finish this little like East Coast press run with him for like another few days. But then as soon as I stay, his manager starts getting really weird about like, you guys can't show each other off on social media. Like don't post that. People know where you are, where he is. Like you were wearing his hoodie in the corner of this video. Like, and at the time I'm like, wait, what the fuck? You were just telling us to like get married and post it everywhere. And now you're saying this. And like, it was really confusing looking back now. It's because he had like a whole ass other girlfriend, but I'll get there. One night we were laying in bed and I look over and his phone's literally getting blown up. Like 76 iMessages type B from a contact that's like baby broken heart emoji. But I don't really think anything of it because I'm a stupid bitch. Hi. Every rapper in the world probably has 19 contacts on their phone that's like baby, you know? So like, I just didn't think it was like his baby. You know what I'm like? <laughs> I sound so stupid. But I really wasn't like caring about these little things or putting them all together. I feel like I was just like, oh, it's like the life of a rapper. It's like fine. He like loves me. And he just like was doing everything in his power to like reassure me that I was like the one for him. Every interview he was doing just being like, that's my girl. Like that's my girl. But then being like, can you cut that out? Cause I have eight girls. But like, I didn't know that, you know? Eventually it's finally time to go home from this New York City trip. And we're on the plane ride home. And it's like cute, you know? Like I'm like trying to suck his dick in the aisle seat. <laughs> and he turns to me and he's like, so like now will you be my girlfriend like we just had this whole trip like I just want to go home and like I feel like I've spent the last nine days like fucking pouring my soul out to you like, he just kept asking me we're stuck on this plane and finally I'm like you know what fuck it I'll be your girlfriend okay I'm your girlfriend hi I'm Tana I'll be your girlfriend like while I didn't know how serious it was at the same time like if someone's asking me to be their girlfriend I was taking it kind of seriously, you know? And he's just being very like, if you get with anyone else, it would literally end my whole life. I couldn't even have my career anymore. Like, you'd shatter my heart, I'd move back home. Like, you're the love of my life. And that's, I guess, also why Xanarchy people, like, coming for me makes me so mad because it's like, you should have heard what y'all motherfucking <laughs> I just got, like, really mad for the first time. And so the flight finally lands. It ends up landing really, really late. We're standing on the plane. And he's like, will you go home with me? Like, I can't sleep alone. I can't sleep without my girlfriend. It's been, like, nine days. I'm like, like, okay, fine, fuck it. Like, it's fucking midnight anyways at LAX. Like, let's just go to your house. It doesn't matter, whatever. We get off the plane. We finally get our luggage. And as we're about to leave, he's like, hold up. Like, I have something I have to do. And I'm like, it's midnight. <laughs> what? And he's like, no, nah, I just got, I got to meet up with somebody. I have a studio session. But then, like, I'll meet up with you and, like, we'll go to bed. Like, will you just, like, go home, like, unpack your shit and then, like, come over? Like, I just have to do something really quick. And I'm like, okay. And so Ashley and I are in the Uber on the way home. And for some reason, I just have this, this inkling to check that girl Steph's Twitter. And so I open up Twitter and I go to her Twitter. Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. I don't even have to scroll. It's literally the first tweet. I don't have to move my fucking thumbs. It's her tweeting like, oh my God, I've missed baby so much. I just can't wait to cuddle tonight and like watch The Office. And then I scroll and it's like, baby's in New York, but he just paid for me to get my nails done. <laughs> And then I scroll a little more and it's like, ugh, can't take this long distance shit. And then I like swipe right and it's like tweets and replies. And it's like her replying to fans being like, yeah, Tana's fine, but this is getting out of hand. <laughs> and so I'm looking at this shit with Ashley and we are both literally in this Uber just like, <laughs> like my whole ass boyfriend has a whole ass girlfriend who knows he has a whole ass girlfriend that's me but she's like vocally angry about it now on Twitter after like the first day in New York yeah we weren't like directly posting about it but like I was wearing his shit on my shit or just like fan pages like posting all the little like correlations of us being together and whatever this bitch has like Xanarchy gang in her bio like you know she knows that like we were just together and then it kind of becomes clear to me that she is like his like hometown girlfriend that he's like probably just like playing and that she's just like waiting for him to like be done fucking around but like Little does she know this is just the beginning. Like, just wait for Noah Cyrus, girl. Anyways, and so I go home later that night. He's like trying to meet up like normal, but I'm like, bitch, you just watched the fucking office with your other girlfriend. Like, what's up? And so I wait like a few days. He's blowing me up on like Twitter, Instagram, all this shit. Like, where are you? Why are you fucking doing this to me? Like, you know how much this is breaking my heart. Like, what's going on? But then I'm also noticing that like he'll DM me like 13 DMs on Twitter and then they'll go away like as if I was like blocked and then like unblocked Does that make sense? And then I'll get like 13 more DMs and this goes on for like five days and finally after that, I'm like fine You want to talk you want to see me? Let's meet up. Let's talk And so I go to his house and I'm like listen I'm like and this just like reminds me of my current situation again I was just like I feel like I'm the most easygoing bitch in the world Like you could literally be like I want to be in an open relationship I want to take things slow and I'd be like perfect my lifestyle fits that better anyways Hardcore monogamy for people with all of these fucking followers and Temptations and travel and youth this whole fucking world especially for like a rapper and feel like if you don't want to be monogamous Like why would you be I go on this whole ass tangent? And he's like 
you're the girl of my fucking dreams. Like, you really fucking think I want to be in, like, wow, this is so my last relationship. I'm literally, like, losing my mind. Like, that Albert Einstein quote. Like, the definition of insanity. Like, I'm a fucking stupid bitch. <laughs> and he's like, I promise you she's crazy. I will show you, like, anything under the face of the sun to show you she's crazy. And then he just spends the next few hours showing me texts, like proving that they're broken up. She just still has his social media and all his shit, so she's like blocking me, and like that's why shit's like bad. And like, it's literally showing me videos from the studio that night being like, see, I never went to her house. I would never fucking cheat on you. Has his manager come in and be like, who's also this grown, like 30 year old man, come in and be like, you really think he would like fuck up the love of his life? You really think he would fuck up the girl of his dreams? Like, he could have anybody and he wants to be with you. Just trust him. Like, this girl's fucking crazy. We've all dealt with it. Has fucking five of his friends come in and be like, no, like, this girl's fucking crazy. Like, he loves you. He only wants to be with you. And so finally, being a fucking idiot, like, that is absolutely the moment I should have walked away. It's like, I believe you. Like, it just, people are just so hard because I've had shit like that happen to me of anything, you know? So I was just like, oh, like, maybe she just, like, really is really fucking crazy. And he's also a very, 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 very convincing Compulsive liar. <laughs> I'm like, I was gonna say person, but like, let's be real. We just spend the next few weeks like normally dating. Shit is so happy. I'm deciding to keep it off of the internet literally completely. He is the one constantly trying to put it on the internet, but then the manager comes in and it's like, no, I don't. And it's just like this weird ass dynamic. But like, again, I'm having so much fun. This is like exactly what I wanted. I'm so happy, blah, blah, blah. And so now it's coming up that he's about to perform at Rolling Loud in California. And so he's like, baby, please come with me to Rolling Loud. Like, I'm about to perform. I just want you to be there for me to perform. Like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, like obviously it's my boyfriend. I'm his fucking girlfriend. And so he gets me this Rolling Loud pass for us to go to Rolling Loud in like five days. The next day, I'm supposed to be going to his concert with him in like San Diego. He gets me this pass. We both separate for the day because we have shit to do. And so I'm in the studio with Ashley. We're just like doing shit, whatever. And Ashley looks at me and she's like, hey, did you see Zan's story? Like, it's a little weird. So then I go on my Instagram to like search for his story and I go to his page and it looks like he has no story. And I'm like, what story? Then she shows me like a nine photo fucking Instagram story that just ends with him like in a car and in the background of the snap, you can like see the girl Steph. And first of all, like I like to think like I'm a sus ass, sly ass bitch. And this was before I even knew you could block people from watching your Instagram story. So I was just so but her that like he had me thinking for the last like three days that he just like wasn't posting on his story but I just been like blocked from his fucking stories and then for him to go to the ends of the earth to tell me this girl is like a crazy fucking ex-girlfriend turned like fan that he wants nothing to do with and like have his whole fucking like squadron of people go to the ends of the earth to tell me that this girl is like nothing to him. So then I go to her Twitter and I see that the last thing she posted was a photo of her wrist with a Rolling Loud artist wrist man being like, I can't wait for Rolling Loud this weekend. As I'm sitting there, my dumb ass, with the same fucking Rolling Loud artist wrist man on, like, I can't wait for Rolling Loud this weekend. Like, what, like are you just gonna bring both of us? Literally, what? So I'm like, so pissed and so I'm supposed to go to this concert in San Diego with him the next day Obviously, I just like completely ghost him. He's blowing me up He's having his friends his manager everyone blowing me up literally saying like you're the love of his life Like you're gonna break his heart like please don't fucking cheat on him all this crazy shit They don't even know that like I know what's good now, you know, but also like it's not like I did any kind of investigative work like This was all just public on social media like literally what the fuck? The whole next day, he's like, I'm gonna just come pick you up for the San Diego concert. Oh, you're not answering. I'm leaving now. Here's the address. Please meet me there. Please don't do this to me. I can't go on if you're not there. I can literally can't perform if you're not there. I'm like on like one of my other Instagrams watching his Instagram story because I'm blocked and he like doesn't even know. That like Steph is going with him to this San Diego concert while he's like blowing me up, telling me I'm like the only one for him. And I'm like, oh my God. I was obviously supposed to go to Rolling Loud with him. I literally have like an artist band for being there like with him, like on my wrist. He's blowing me up to go to Rolling Loud with him. I don't answer. Him and his people obviously leave because they have to be there way earlier because he's like performing because he's like a rapper. I end up going with all of my friends on this party bus to Rolling Loud and we all black out. Trevor pees in a Tito's bottle. Worst experiences of my life. Oh, 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 in my a Tito's bottle right now. Oh my god! I just no. saw his dick. No. And I'm blacked out on this party bus and everyone 
everyone starts showing me his Instagram story and it's him in a hotel room with like roses and like some bitch. But the gag of it all is it's not even this Steph girl. It's like a whole ass other ass bitch. And so at this point, I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? I obviously have to end things with him. He's absolutely psychotic. I'm now in this like love trapezoid with fucking Lil Xan. Obviously, this was like the first time I had a rapper boyfriend and he cheated on me. So like, what do you do? You just like black out. <laughs> so I get probably the most fucked up I've been in the last like two and a half years. I already wanted to get really fucked up at Rolling Loud, but now everyone around me too is like, fuck him, he ain't shit, chug, chug, chug. I like think I'm this hard little bitch who can just like mix everything. I'm like, I don't remember anything for the next like eight hours, so I'll skip that. <laughs> I finally get to Rolling Loud, and all I remember are like flashes of photography. I walk into this artist section. The first person I see is Adam. I'm like, why would you let me be with Diego? He's such a piece of shit. He just cheated on me. What the fuck is going on? Like blackout. And Adam's like, I don't know. Like even I thought you were the one for him. Like, but now looking back, like fuck you, Adam. Like no, you didn't. <laughs> I don't even know. I think Adam just wanted the like clout couple possibilities. And I also don't think at that time he realized how like bad of a crazy liar Diego is. And, or was, maybe he's like different now, but like probably not. And then I remember turning around to walk out into Rolling Loud and just walking directly into Diego and his entire team and this random ass bitch. instantly realizes what's going on so she just like backs up it's literally straight out of a movie she literally just takes like 15 steps back and i'm standing there barbecue sauce on my titties in the middle of this artist section literally feet away from like post malone <laughs> and at the top of my lungs i have never screamed at someone this loud in public i'll never do it again like literally it was a one-time thing i, I can't remember this much like i totally forgot about all these like little things i was like rolling loud and i was like yeah, I think Ashley just like sympathy blacked out just as much like with me um, And so I'm not even gonna say the things I was screaming in his face to be real with you I'm really just I'm really just gonna skip them because they were really really profane and really really mean even for me It was a lot and I think that if you've seen any videos on my YouTube channel, you know You're a cunt! You're a cunt! You're a cunt! You're a cunt! Fight me bitch! Hit me bitch! You won't say shit bitch! Let's go bitch! You're a cunt! You're a cunt! For me to say that the things I was screaming at the top of my lungs were Insane. I'm literally full blown like clapping, spitting, crying, screaming like Fuck you! Fuck you! What the fuck is wrong with you fucking cheating fucking liar? While he's standing there being like, it's not like that. You're the love of my life. You're the one for me. While this other fucking girl is standing 10 feet away literally watching this happen. And everyone on his team went from standing around him to all just backing up like this. Oh shit. Like, like this, this is really happening like this. And I'm like, and fuck you, and fuck you, and fuck you, and fuck you for all lives. We just screaming, literally feet from Ty Dolla Sign, like Post Malone, fucking every rapper you can ever think of in this fucking artist section of Rolling Loud. It was literally a movie. So I break up with him. I'm like, text Hunter, apologize to him, ask for him back. And then later that night on his Instagram story, it's fucking stuff. I then find out a few days later that the other girl literally thought she was his girlfriend too That there was another girl that thought she was his girlfriend Then there was Steph, then there was me He stays hitting me up trying to like apologize I ignore him for a really long time Steph ends up making this YouTube video About like the downfall of their relationship And all the times he cheated on her and all this shit But basically in this video is saying like That I was like the first one and the reason that like started it all And it's just like even though as it was happening, she was literally tweeting like, Tana Fire, I fucking selected her for fucking Diego. And then I find out that Elijah was at the studio with them like forever ago and that she was like watching my YouTube videos like with Elijah. And I tried to reach out to her, mm, kinda, and by that I mean like subtweeted. <laughs> In reality, I really did wanna be like, girl power, fuck him, like we got played by him, but she was just too like wrapped up in his world, I think, and like wanting to be with him and obviously loving him too because they had like years of history, you know, that she just hated me and I kinda and just like took the L and understood and like felt really sorry for her and like felt really sorry that it ever happened to her But like also like hi, I got cheated on too. Like let's bond girl Like get fucking boba and get her nails done and talk about Lil Xan's dick, you know? Like, and then I have like 
like a lapse of judgment for a few months where we like on again, off again, like hooked up. And I was like, oh, we can just like be fuck buddies. It'll be fun. And it like was fun. I'm really just spilling all of the tea right now. I'm in deep. <laughs> And then he just ended up dating Noah Cyrus, and I... And I... Oh! <sighs> you know, like, none of this story hurts. You know, like, I went into it, I, I knew that I was dating a rapper. I knew going into it that he'd, like, probably hurt me. Like, it wasn't gonna be this long-term relationship, but, like, I fucking love Miley Cyrus, dude. I fucking love her. I fucking love Tish. I fucking love Billy Ray. I fucking love Brandy. And I fucking love Noah. I fucking love the whole fucking Cyrus family so fucking much. Are you fucking kidding me? And so I was like, he dates Noah Cyrus. Noah and I even had mutual friends and I was like trying to just like warn her and look out for her, you know. And it's like she didn't want to have it. And I get it. I've been there. He's a really fucking persuasive person and really fucking sweet and makes you feel really fucking great And the beginning is fucking fun as shit. Like I was like, you know, go off I was also hoping he was like smart enough to like not fuck over Noah Cyrus Because like it's literally Noah fucking Cyrus And then I just start seeing the way they are on social media and seeing how they're like together every second And seeing how they're like not together and he's like in fucking Adam's vlogs with like bitches around him And I just like am watching this all unfold like knowing how this is gonna go And then I hear from like a bunch of other people that she just like hates me. <laughs> it's just like it hurt. It still hurts. Like I fucking like Noah. I love you. Like mad at you is a fucking banger. Like fucking make me cry. Like it made me cry, bitch. I fucking love you. And Zan's like on Instagram, like posting fucking grid posts with Billy Ray. Sisters with Osiris now. I fucking love the Cyruses. Like, if anything, it was literally me literally being excited that mine and Noah Cyrus's holes have been in the same place, you know? Ugh. And I tweet this tweet. It does really well. Engagement on 10. Weeks go by. I don't think anything of this tweet. I'm like, and fast forward a few weeks, I'm standing at the VMAs in New York City, curtains on my fucking arms, trying to get a drink before this fucking show at the VMAs. And I'm standing there. <laughs> Drapery and all. <laughs> Waiting to get this drink, and I turn to see Lil Zan beelining towards me. I didn't even know he was there. This was before that fucking photo of him, like, smushing his face on her was everywhere. It was seconds after I walked the carpet. And I see him walking towards me, and I'm like, there's no way. There's, there's no way that A, I'm gonna let him ruin my VMAs right now. That B, we're gonna have a conversation. C, he's fucking happy with Noah Cyrus. But I realize he's walking over me, and he walks up to me. And we're just having this, like, super normal conversation, because I feel like that's how he is. He's like, so what? Like, shit happens. I still love you, though. Like, you know what I mean? And since the point of him, like, cheating on me originally, we'd, like, had all of those like on again off again moments so like we were like cool I guess I'm like but obviously since he started dating Noah we like weren't texting or anything but I was also doing my own thing with like some A-lists he compliments my outfit he's like telling me how he's like dripped head to toe in Supreme and they like sent it to him and like whatever and I see out of my peripheral a very <laughs> very unhappy Noah Cyrus walking up to us and I'm standing there, barbecue sauce on my titties, and she looks at me, and it's just this awkward ass silence. And he's just like, oh fuck. You can just tell by the look on his face, he's like, I done pissed my Cyrus off. And she just looks so fucking unhappy that she even had to like walk up to us. And I think she was like watching us talk from afar too, like waiting for him to walk away. So she like comes up. And I'm like, I didn't know what to do, you know? It's an awkward situation. It's not like we're standing in this big group of people. Like, it's literally just me, Noah Cyrus, and Zan. And I look at her and I'm like, oh my god, like, you guys are so cute. Like, you look so good. <laughs> but, like, your sister's my idol. Like, I'm just trying to be nice. In reality, like, girl power. Like, I'm happy for y'all. If anything, I'm literally like, Diego, for the rest of your life, don't fuck this up. Marry this girl. It's the best you're ever gonna do. I fucking love Noah Cyrus. And I'm just like, oh my god, like, you guys look so cute. Like, oh my god, you look so good. Like, whatever. And she looks at me. Up and down. And goes, nice to meet you. Eskimo sisters, right? And just like, shoulder checks my ass. And walks away like, Ugh. 
then he's just like, man, I, I don't even know. And just like walks away. And I'm just standing there, curtains on my arms, like. Like, the, like do you, do, what do you do? Do I follow her and tell her the tweet was a fucking joke? And it's like obviously she knew the tweet was a joke. Like, we're Eskimo sisters. Like, dap me up, brother. Like, literally, what? parties, you know, and I just like hear word on the street from like her friends and she like doesn't fucking like me and it's just like, it's just like a fuck, like, 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 like weeks, fuck. And then they break up, just how he does with every single one of his girlfriends. I'm like, girl, I could have given this to you play by fucking play. I also kind of assume that once he cheats on her and does like the same shit to her that he did to me, that it could like bring us closer and like I have hope for like my relationship with Noah Cyrus, but like, still nothing. I'm like fine though, I swear, like I'm like fine, like it doesn't like keep me up at night or anything, but like Noah Cyrus probably doesn't like me like at all. And so yeah, that's like basically how things end. I'm sure I'm missing like 40,000 fucking anecdotal details. But honestly, stepping out of this situation and assessing it, the only thing that upsets me is the fact that Noah Cyrus and I can't just be like besties, like Eskimo little besties. And that's the time I got cheated on my SoundCloud rapper and why Noah Cyrus hates me. I hope you enjoyed this story. I filmed it 4,000 times and always almost uploaded it. But then the one time I actually was gonna upload it, I ran into him at a party and now we're cool. But Will we be cool after this? Stay tuned to find out. <laughs> but actually though, no hard feelings. I obviously went into every interaction with him knowing what I was gonna get. And like, if anything, everything was like fun until it like wasn't fun, you know? So for all of you young girls out there watching me that just like really wanna date a rapper, hopefully now I've given you the insight on what it's like. No, I'm kidding. I'm like, all the other rappers I've dated have been amazing. <laughs> I'm like, buy my Scandalous merch below, including Scandalous thongs that you can totally fuck SoundCloud rappers in too. And to follow all my social media for updates on my reality show where I make fuck SoundCloud rappers live. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Xanarchy baby.